I'm Dave Koz, and this is Driving with Dave. Step, I've never been in one of these cars. Before. Step into my office. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's that's one hell of an iPad. <laughs> Every person who's never been in a Tesla immediately comments on that. Huge groove. It is really exciting to have you in this car, on this cruise, in my life. Chewing gum over here. Yes. Is that is that wrong of me? I shouldn't be chewing gum. I'm actually conducting an interview. But actually, as I've said this many times, we only have about four viewers. So it's like if they're oh. upset with me chewing gum... It's fine. Well, I just got done playing, so you get the funk mouth going. You gotta put a little gum in there. That's right. Fun, <laughs> funk mouth. How'd the rehearsal go today? Really good. Yeah, great bunch of players. I'm in love with that drummer. Man, Frank Fluker is his name. Yeah. By the way, remember he, that uh, name? I told him that you loved him. He was made, yeah, made his day. He, he's a good bus driver, as we call it. Drives the bus well. So, is the drummer for you as much as you? You know, music as you've made over the years uh, is the drummer the key to a successful gig yeah they can be when you're um, you know rehearsing with a new band like that and uh, somebody that knows it so well and knows the arrangement so well like I said really drives the bus and keeps everybody going but everybody's important to me <laughs> I've, been, yeah. I've had the fortune of working with some really great players over the years and um, uh, you know I, the, so they're learning off of they're learning the, the music off of live recordings with all of these great right. players. And your live recordings, I mean, your show is so much fun. That's the thing that I love. It's, it's incredibly great musical, musically, but it's just such a fun party atmosphere. Yeah, I tried to. That, that happened kind of by accident years ago. <laughs> how, how did it happen by accident? My very first gig when I started out was in a mall. I did a Tiffany show, like, in, in a mall. And after I'd play a song, uh, the audience Tiffany, was just, Tiffany the singer, not the, Tiffany the singer, the yes. brand. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Checking. I'll make sure. Yeah. No. Uh, and the and uh, once we stop a song, the audience was dead silence. Have you ever experienced that before? Where yeah. you put your heart and soul, and then there's just nothing. But that wasn't because they hated the music. It was just the culturally a, a different yeah, kind of thing. And they didn't know it. I was, you know, <laughs> I, I had, uh, you know, just come out with my first album a couple of months before, and they really didn't know. And uh, so I started this to fill the dead space while the band was getting ready for the next song. I would just start screaming. <laughs> <laughs> trying to fire up the audience. <laughs> and it just kind of stuck. It came, became kind of a, a trademark thing. I like, all right, take me back a little bit to um, how you became an artist. And stuff. But actually, let's go back a little further than that. Because you and I share, we were just talking about this before we got in the car. You and I share a gig. Yes. We both worked for Richard Marks yes. as Richard Marks' a saxophone player for, I did it for like a year, and you did it for how long? Uh, probably like three years. Wow. Yeah, we both had our mullets back then. And, yeah, uh, proud of it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we rocked yeah. it. It was a rock thing. And Got the uh, pictures to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not, I mean, that's Richard Marks is certainly a, a great gig, you know, and yeah. he had a lot of hits. And, um, but you have worked with superstars. I mean, yeah. Literal superstars. Tina Turner. I can't. I mean, you want to talk about gig jealousy? <laughs> to me, the, the the three gigs that come to mind: Tina Turner, Joe Cocker, and Tower of Power. Yeah. Those are three of the absolute top echelon of of gigs. As far as the gigs are concerned, the music, and when you think about these artists. I was not there, so I don't know. <laughs> Are you willing to talk a little about oh, those? Oh, yeah. You know, I, I've actually been blessed to um, work with all great people. I mean, I learned different things from each one. I mean, uh, I played with Huey Lewis in the news. And Huey Lewis, my, that's right. That was my first tour. And um, Huey taught me about just chill out, just relax, you know. Um, don't get uptight about stuff because there's that you can't control. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard Marks taught me about the importance of songwriting. You know, he's right. an amazing songwriter. Um, Tina Turner was just the consummate professional. She controlled every ounce of that show, 
from the stage building to the dance moves to every note you play. I mean, she would go through, she'd have a day she'd go through the band basically one note at a time, each person at a time to see what was going on. And really? she just shaped it exactly the way she wanted to do it. Now, this was my hunch about her, is that she is a, a, a very warm person. Beautifully good warm person. and loving and um, hysterical. She would take us out to dinner kind of regularly. and. Uh, she was a very funny, great personality, and um, yeah, absolutely nothing bad to say about her. And Joe Cocker was just this guttural performance thing, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, all emotion. And, um, you know, it's funny, he was really big in Germany and, and Europe, so I did a lot of touring over there with him. When he sang, well, actually, all of uh, Tina, too, it was so emotional, so present. So, you know, like, believable. There yeah. was no affectation whatsoever. I mean, that the, was the re really the way he sang. Yeah. That, it was oh, just he, amazing that he became so famous for singing like we that. We'd play in front of 15,000 people in an arena, and he treated it like it was a blues club. <laughs> you know, he had a rug that he stood on, and he would never move off of that carpet, and he said very few words. He oh. would just, uh, just pour the heart and soul into the blues. Um, Tina, what an amazing singer. I mean, we would do an unplugged set in the middle of it that was just phenomenal. I mean, she could have done an entire unplugged show. Right. But uh, she was all, you know, about putting production in there and stuff going crazy. Oh, she had such, what a story to tell, too. Yeah. Just the fact that she was on that stage, her presence on the stage was just meant so much to me. So how did you make the transition from being a sideman to superstars to <laughs> doing your own your own thing what was the the impetus for that did you um, want to do it or was it kind of suggested to you and mm -hmm. I also want to ask you once you answer that question I want to talk to you about your specific brand of music because I'm as a saxophone player and as an artist I really admire your stick to that you chose a, a lane you really said this is where I'm going to live and everything I do is going to live in this lane and it was re it really it, it made it so that like is very identifiable yeah I think we're all made up of uh, all the elements that we've heard through our whole life you know and uh, I've had such great influences from uh, the great French classical artist uh, Marcel Mulet mm -hmm. to um, just raw Junior Walker and everything in between and um, you know I think unconsciously y you bring that into it and talking about why to get into it I just you know for many years I don't think I had anything to say and all of a sudden I had something to say I was doing a bunch of writing and I go let's give this a try let's give it a shot and see what happens and uh, I got really fortunate Warner Brothers picked up my first album and did a great job of kind of breaking me to um, to the format and you know in the end it's smooth jazz I'm not afraid of the word smooth jazz a lot of people no, are afraid of that word and uh, that's that's what I do so how many records has it been Eleven. Eleven. I was cranking them out about every 14 to 18 months, and now I'm taking a little time on number 12. Yeah. That's good. What do you got in the store? Um, doing mean, an can album. You, yeah, just can, you, can you give us a little uh, hint, or is it, not, is it still just dating? It's, uh, I'm doing a lot of writing. I have about seven uh, of the songs written. Haven't put any saxophone on them yet. <laughs> I always say I sing along with them and save the performance to the end. I found out that uh, if you do a demo, you can't ever replace the saxophone again. I can never play it over and have a better performance. So uh, I always try to wait till the end. What is that though? I mean, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's so true. In that when you're not thinking about it, when you don't think that it's the the real one, right? then you're just loose and it just comes out. Yeah. It's funny because it's the, oftentimes the first time you're playing a song. That's like channeled music. A you know? lot of first takes. A lot of first takes. I remember um, I saw Slow Jam, which was uh, a radio song for me. and um, I did that whole thing, and I think in three continuous takes all the way through it, you know, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all about that, that first take thing and there's something always magical about it. I think you said it, it right, there's the, not the pressure of it, um, you know, being the final thing. You can, yeah. I can always do better. Yeah, you're not you even thinking do. about it. You're just like, let me put this down yeah, yeah. and then I'll deal with it later. And, and, uh, and I record that... at home. That's beautiful to be able to record at home and have that relaxed feeling there. And um, But how do you do deal with producing your own music? So you have your your writing and producing and yeah. being the artist. And in me. terms of being able to be like the good cop, bad cop 
that, that producers are often with artists and being able to say, that was good, but I know you can do one better. Uh, sometimes the tough love that, that producers will will uh, share with artists, it's always a ginger, you know, got to be gingerly about how you do it because yeah. you don't want to step on somebody's um, creative genius, <laughs> per se. <laughs> you know, I'm completely uh, focused when I'm doing a record, especially when the sax goes down and, and uh, you know, I... Before I name the songs, I um, I put numbers on them. So, like the last album was album number eleven, song number one, and uh, I try to write them all in order. Pretty much, I do. And uh, really, yeah. Wow, you you write the album in order. I write the album in order. Now that I've not heard it. I'll write That's a song. Very and go, cool. I need this next, or I need this next. That's really and smart. For the most part, I stick to that. And uh, so, by the time I'm done, I'll have album. 11 song number one version 70 <laughs> <laughs> but how do you know when it's done uh, like what, at what point when, when it has to be done when the label goes we've already got your stuff in the book right. and we need it now okay I'm done yeah, I'm done I'm done and uh, I've worked with some other artists mixing for them and and uh, I'm not really unique in, in this so. no I think most most artists they abandon their projects because they have to, as opposed to <laughs> actually finish them. Oh, I'll keep going forever, but yeah, uh, yeah the label goes. We need it now. You're done. Yeah. Okay, you're done. What about um, to relax and take your mind off of stuff? For a while there, you were making pizzas. And I am. Are you I, still I've, doing that? I've become a uh, pizza maniac. I haven't right now because uh, of the winter time. I got a wood oven uh, pizza maker and um, pizza oven. That I have outside, so with our crazy winds and fires, I right. haven't been able to use it. Yeah. But uh, I'm looking forward to firing that thing up soon. And what is your favorite pizza that you that you make that you're going to make for me, hopefully? Yes, just the margarita. Simple, simple classic. margarita. Yeah, I get um, um, you know make it from scratch, the dough, the sauce, um, and uh, I love buffalo mozzarella, the real buffalo milk mozzarella, and. Uh, you're making that, me hungry right that's, now. That's my favorite one. I'm coming over. I'll be over tonight. <laughs> Let's do it. Huge Let's groove. It. Thank you so much. Buddy. Oh, my pleasure. This you know that I'm a huge fan of yours. You are professionally very and personally. Kind. And feeling is mutual, sir. I really appreciate it. I love you today than yesterday.